thanks everybody for joining us today at this lovely Sunday morning, uh, very close to the end of the conference. Uh, today we'd like to introduce to everyone here about a software we've been working on for you know, OSM mappers, and it's called Chameleon. So my name's Austin, right here with me is Evan. Uh, we are kind of part-time mapper, part-time developer for CART, uh, and we've been working on this for the past year, so we really like to show everybody just what it can do and potentially have the community give us feedback, see how, how we can keep working with forward with this. Yeah, so just a little bit on what we plan to cover today. So we're going to go over kind of the broader story of how the Chameleon came about and also what exactly is it and also why anyone should be using it. Uh, also, it's actually a very simple software, so we're going to do a really quick uh, instructional kind of overview of how to use it, followed by where you can find it now because we actually just publicly release it on GitHub, so everybody has access to it. So a little bit into the story. So you know, as an OSM mapper, when you first enter and start looking at OSM database, it can be very robust and dense and very difficult to narrow down individual features or objects. As shown right here with a really complex road network, as you can see. And you know, us at CARD, we, we do driving. We have an extensive ground survey program that kind of allows us to capture street imagery and upload to Mapillary, and which supports our mapper uh, team to kind of look at these imageries and do mapping on the on the OSM server. So this kind of gives community a place where it helps us check our own work, but also help us understand the, the work that we're doing in a broader scope, is that it's able to catch different parts of it and help facilitate our QC and QA. So what exactly is it? Um, it's actually a very simple tool it's for change detection. Uh, it's basically taking snapshots from overpass turbo from time one, time two, and provide a output of changes that has occurred on the objects they're interested in. So this can be building, can be roads, can be points of interest. And with that, I'll turn it over to Evan for our development. Yeah, so this is um, working on like tabular um, CSV outputs from Overpass and providing that. So that's kind of the context too is, um, this is kind of based on like giving you spreadsheet outputs and then um, going from those into JASM or <clears throat> or whatever other tool. So this started off um, just kind of as a shell script I made for myself around a library called Q, um, which just lets you run SQL queries on CSV files. Um, and then I went on vacation, and Austin and one of our other developers uh, used AppleScript to make it a little bit more accessible to the rest of our team. Um, we then went and kind of redid it all in Python. Uh, and then just kind of continued to optimize it based on our internal feedback from there. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what Q looks like as a command line tool. Um, and then the, some of the Apple script that we use to uh, make that a little more accessible. Um, and then this is once we started to redo it with Python and PyQt or PyQt uh, to kind of eliminate the command line entirely um, and make it a little more useful. So that's the original interface and then the output, one of the original outputs, and then this is what it looks like today. Um, so we started off just with what, we work on roads a lot at CART, and so we started off just kind of with the tags that we are checking most. Um, Chameleon is outputting a CSV per tag, and so you kind of are getting a list of all the changes to a particular tag um, and working in that way. Um, and so to make it a little more useful, we added um, freeform tagging. We pulled the 100 most or 1,000 most uh, common tags from tag info as uh, autocomplete. Um, and so we, we added little convenience things like being able to drag and drop uh, files onto the input fields. Um, the uh, five tags there will change depending on what you use most frequently. Uh, and then you can add whatever tag you like. If it's not in the autocomplete, it will still attempt to run it. And there's this grouping functionality, which um, I'll show in the live demo. It's a little bit difficult to explain, but it's basically consolidating changes by the type of change um, into one row. So I'll get more on that in a minute. Um, 
we use it um, to understand how objects uh, evolve over a period of time. So, you know, we're looking usually at uh, specific regions. Um, we might be looking at the highways in the region or the ref tags in the region and making sure that um, those changes are logical, whether they're internal changes or external changes from the community. Uh, we also use it to um, identify, and maybe even this will be more useful for the rest of the community, is um, to identify other mappers, see who's interested in what you're working on, um, and collaborate with them. Is this you? Yeah. So yeah, so just like Evan mentioned, um, the goal of community is kind of provide everybody the ability to capture capture that differences and changes in the OSM database and be able to you know collaborate with other mappers and also look into them, uh, kind of a little bit like the nuance that was mentioned in the previous talk just now, um, and to make it you know really friendly for the community, we polish it up in the final phase of our development to make it really user friendly. So now the tool only requires four simple steps for anybody to use. So first of all, um, of course, we leverage heavily on the Overpass Turbo website to have that data snapshot provided for the Chameleon tools to run. Uh, if anybody is fortunate to participate in Min's talk on Friday afternoon about Overpass, I'm sure everybody has a solid understanding of that after that talk. Otherwise, there's also really robust resources on the OSM wiki that you can look into for Overpass API and also Overpass QL. Uh, other otherwise, feel free to always contact us. I mean, we have been playing with it a lot, so that's another route that you can get information about how to use Overpass efficiently. And then once you are able to establish your query and on the Overpass Turbo website, you can very simply just export it with the uh, as a raw data for Overpass. And that would be in the correct format for community use, so streamlining the whole process. And once you open up community, it's just going to be a simple interface like this. Um, please ignore the popular tags. Those are just taking a screenshot from my end, and those are the things that we're mostly curious about. But those will change as time goes on, and the user uses based on their tagging preference to look at. And then, first of all, you really just import a file really simply, just a browsing tool right there, followed by the tags that you're interested in. And then once everything is set up, you can just hit run, whether or not you choose the grouping options or not. And once it's completed, it gives you a quick summary of what has changed. In this case, we see that name has some changes, shop has changes, and amenity also has changes in the data set that was inputted. So right here is the simple outputs from that kind of summary. Uh, please note that the data right here is all uh, kind of changed for the purpose of the presentation, so they don't represent the actual OSM data. Uh, but as you can see, um, the output actually features uh, nice separate headings followed by ID first, which is the OSM object ID that allows you to locate the object at, of interest. Uh, followed the URL. Right now, that's catered towards JOSM users, where you can actually use remote control and kind of just pull that object right into JOSM where you're editing. Uh, followed by user, of course, is the OSM member that was responsible for the, the change that has happened. And also version time stamp, just more metadata to kind of help you understand how that, uh, what the evolution process of that object was between the timestamps that you were looking at. So yeah. Um, so our goal is to have this available as a self-contained package. Um, we just made the GitHub public like 10 minutes ago. So <laughs> we haven't uploaded the, act, the packages. Um, the GitHub has instructions on how to build the packages, but um, you know we'd like this to be accessible to people who aren't familiar with um, running like pip and uh, command line things, um, and that's just a double click to run thing. Uh, overpass is going to be like some understanding of overpass is going to be important. We have some examples in our README, um, and the main thing is that since it's a CSV output, it's a little bit different than what most people use overpass for. Um, we're using cross-platform libraries, so we're able to run on Linux, Mac OS, or Windows. Uh, although I will admit that we don't have a lot of Windows use in our office, so we don't get to test on that very often. Uh, in the future, we're looking at um, maybe breaking into light and expert um, versions, so possibly leveraging PostGIS for people who are interested in doing some more um, kind of um, analysis, you know, again, we're kind of using this to um, produce spreadsheets that we can track different projects in, um, but there's some things we're interested in doing with clustering and such with um, PostGIS. And that's our GitHub URL. And uh, also just to acknowledge people who worked on this, um, 
you want. Yeah, I mean, we would like to take a quick moment to just acknowledge the people along the way throughout the past year, kind of help us establish this tool that we have going on. Uh, first of all, thanks, Carl, very much for providing the opportunity for doing this. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, initial development wasn't just us, so mm-hmm. we'd like to thank the people that also partake in it, such as Leif. I can see him in the back right there. Mm-hmm. Um, also, Tim, who's now with us today, um, but he also helped out greatly in the development process. Uh, following that, uh, we kind of send out this offer to the rest of the car team to test it out. So we're really fortunate to have those kind of in-house testers for us to kind of fix the bugs and fix the crashes here and there to really help out streamline the user experience when we finally release it today at State of the Map. Uh, last but not least, as you see, the Q Chameleon to the right over there is designed by our um, our team member, Sammy Pearson. So if anyone's interested, please check her out. And with that, we'd like to take it to the demo uh, real quick. So this is just going to be a quick run through of the Chameleon tool. Uh, we have two sets of data, I believe Evan has pulled this morning from um, Washington, D.C. Yeah, I tried to pull from So we're, our office is in Washington State, and I kind of forgot that everyone forgets about us. So <laughs> I naively went over past and said geocode by uh, Washington, and it said, oh, you mean the city. <laughs> so it happens a lot. We're used to it. And not at all resentful about it. <laughs> I just make this easier on myself. So um, this is the package I was, it appears on my Linux machine. Um, pops open as we said, you know, pretty simple interface. Um, and I'm gonna just do this with some um, building and amenity stuff that I downloaded. So maybe I'll I'll put that to that. Um, Since it outputs, since we're just outputting CSVs right now, um, it just is gonna output one CSV per tag that you check over. So um, when you do the output, it's a prefix, um, and then it will complete it with the, whatever you enter with the mode. So I'll do a uh, building amenity shop, and then just to kind of show what happens, how we handle errors, I'll do a uh, highway, which is not in my source data. Um, it's a pretty small data set, so it runs pretty fast. Uh, so yeah, it's it complaining is. that there's not a highway tag, because I didn't include that in my overpass query, but uh, that these were all complete. Yeah, in the event that when you download from overpass, this is where it kind of we leverage on this user knowledge to have it at least an intermediate understanding of the overpass query and how that functions. So you can understand what data you're actually pulling from the time stamps, uh, snapshots from the uh, OSM database. And that's kind of where the free from tagging comes to play is it allows you to customize to your use and how you would like to look at the data set, uh, kind of single out the tags they're interested in. <laughs> <clears throat> So um, yeah, here's the output I have for the amenity tag. Um, we're always including the name tag um, for context, um, although you can also analyze those as well. So we can see the last user who worked on uh, each feature. We can see the timestamp, um, and then we have kind of an action thing to clarify whether a feature was actually deleted or is not present in the later snapshot. Um, we interpret that as a deletion, but that may not always be true or whether the tag uh, was just modified. So here we can see like this pharmacy, um, somebody removed amenity equals pharmacy from it, but they didn't actually remove the feature. Um, And then there's a lot of new um, items here that were newly created. Um, You know, it's gonna be similar with uh, building tag, just looking at that. Um, separate thing and then I'll show what it looks like when we do um, the grouping functionality type run that it's good complaint with the highway tag again Um, I close that message real fast but you can see it output um, significantly fewer rows that time so I think it's about a third as many wrote. I don't know why this is insisting on popping behind. Yeah. Um, so in this case, you know, this is the same data that we just looked at, um, but now we have a count of how many features we're grouping into this row. 
Um, we have a list of users who worked on that group. We have the latest timestamp out of that group. And then um, we're grouping by type of change. So we can see that there were two different features that were changed in this snapshot from uh, cafe to fast food. Um, we can see that there were 10 embassies that were deleted or you know, possibly since this is a buildings, they might have been moved on to, um, text might have been moved on to a polygon or closed way. Um, and so this is a way of consolidating some of these long spreadsheets, um, especially like when we're working with refs, you'll sometimes see 20 rows of a new ref or somebody removing a space from a ref, things like that. And so it's helpful to us to sometimes group those together since we're usually looking at each one of these rows to load those all in the jaws at once instead of loading each one, checking it, loading, and it winds up just being the sequential waves. Um, I think that's everything we had. Do we have anything else that we wanted to? That is everything. Um, I guess on another note, kind of bring back to the what's next slide that we were talking about. The idea with this grouping function initially it was to help us, you know, find spatially correlated objects so that we can have all these objects grouped together in a, you know, with spatial logic and actually understand how it's all interconnected. Uh, as of right now, those are just grouped by the type of change. So in case you guys are curious, if a row changes from name A to B and there's five different rows of name A that will change from B, they'll all get grouped together. So it's not really spatially connected in that sense, but that's something that we're hoping to work on. Right. So you're not seeing a row of like things all around a country, but you're actually seeing logical spatial groups of yeah. changes. And the hope is basically if, if say, I'm also a mapper that's mapping a neighborhood around, say, you know, this county, and then I'm, I'm just curious about who else is also working in this area, and also how has, you know, a new shop has opened, or has any shop that's old that closed down, then very easily you can just look at, say, this past month, has any new restaurant has opened with community real, real quick, just downloading buildings from over past Turbo, and then you can just run through it and say, okay, so it looks like there's like five buildings that's got name change, and then two buildings that's new, so maybe we can go check out those restaurants and see who's responsible for adding those, and then you can realize, hey, sooner or later, you can have people to map with in the local area. All right, so um, can we take any questions? Um, that's probably going to be like kind of far out and it might also start crossing into some other QA tools that, um, exist. Yeah. I mean, this was kind of a, um, you know, part-time project that was kind of like spun out, like started off as just a playing around with scripting and grew from there. So, um, you know, it's a possibility if that's something that is, winds up being a gap in, um, what's a, a, the other tools that are available, then we can look into it. But, um. I think thus far, simplicity has been a pretty guiding factor for that. Yeah. Oh, on the grouping results, uh, does the link allow you to uh, load everything, all you, the group results into like Java? Yeah, so the link that we have right now will load the entire group. Okay. So. Unfortunately, I don't think there's any way you can load in a group of objects through the browser and check in the ID, not that I, we're aware of at the moment. But Yeah, because ID, I think, is just loading by B-Box. I don't think we have a way to load just a way ID and ID. But we could add for the ungrouped functionality. That's a possibility. Yeah. That's um, something we would think about just to broaden the scope of different editors that people are using, like Potlodge, ID, JOSM. So everybody can use command output just really effectively by pulling the object of interest into whatever platform they're editing in. Hmm. Yeah. Anything else? All right, well, thank you.